But when you look at from the monetary side, which is also an impactful level of policy on the populace, the report talks about the MPC and of course the, the issues around it now, the political issue in Brooklyn. What, what are, are, is the report suggesting and saying at this time? Well, the, the report was clear that at this particular point in time, whereby you don't have, there's this political in Brooklyn, it, it, it creates roadblocks for monetary policy to shift from just policy goals to intermediate goals. Now, what do we mean by intermediate goals? Intermediate goals, we refer to them as like your broad money. You look at them in terms of your narrow money. Yeah. Look at them like your uh, net, net credits. Yeah. You know, these are strong factors that actually helps in building your policy in terms of inflation, in terms of growth. And therefore, it's in yes, monetary policy and the fiscal side are clear. They want inflation at 12%. We want to achieve growth levels at 3.2 percent sustainable growth, sustainable growth. Yeah. but then the question is what are the intermediate goals that will help you achieve that so if you don't have an intermediate goal intermediate goal it also leaves those goals those policy goals in the vacuum it's Which a channel it should be a very big challenge it's a big point. challenge yeah. and at the same time is that because this um, intermediate goals they also rely on money market instruments just yes. like i stated yeah. you have them in terms of broad money and your narrow money it leaves yeah. the money market largely unguided and over time, it also affects the perception of the central bank. And at the same time, we're at this, this, um, this crossroad. Monetary policy are at this crossroad. In the sense that monetary policy have to come out. That at this point in time, which, between inflation and growth, which one is more self-perpetuating? Because if you are not clear about which of the two, it also leaves economic agents with the wrong signal. And even investors. Yeah, with investors. Because we always have to be clear on our signals. Clear on our signals. Mm. So that is, but then in terms of monetary policy, what we've had is that we've had inflation. Yes, inflation has fallen from 18.5% where it was to 15%. Which it's is, receding. It's yeah. rec as receding, forgive me. Mm. And you've also had a scenario whereby reserves have also increased. Which is one of the best stories <laughs> so, so far. So it creates, um, it creates room for accommodation. Yes. But the threat certainly will be on the in the second half of the year, when you have yeah, like the election yeah, season, will the take election a, season comes, so you have more naira to try after to try the dollar. So that is also going to be a concern. Mm. And if I remind, you know, PwC came up with this idea that you might in um, that the CBM might be forced to hike its rate twice. But well, that's that's itself too. That's a, that's a solid projection. <laughs> that, that. Ooh, look, look, look at that and how that plays out. That. But from your own view, what, what, what do you, what do you what do you take from that? Well, I'm um, I'm one of I'm a, I'm from a gradualist opinion that yeah. you don't you don't toy with um, interest rates. Yes. Within too short, within a very even in the US, even, everybody's the, watching Jerome Powell, the new Fed chair, about yeah. the, the, this issue of low interest rates. So people have to be very careful. Very careful. More importantly, is that you don't tweak interest rates within a short period of time. Okay, mm -hmm. you reduce interest rates in March. Mm -hmm. Then maybe sometimes in the year, you now increase it. You know, it creates, it also creates, it also questions, in it questions what you take in consideration, either your long-term policy or your short-term policy. Okay. Now, when, when we look at the global economic outlook, what are the key assumptions that come from this report, the Project Confidential Report? Well, the key assumptions are you've already had increased inflation, especially in the U.S., and those increased inflations, one way or the other, also one way is going to also inc it's also increase the probability of hike. So the question is not about whether you're going to hi have a hike in the U.S. The question mm. is how many times are you going to hike, mm. hike the fund rate. So that's an issue because obviously that will also affect the um, for, uh, foreign portfolio. At the same time, it's it also it's also a danger, ex especially for global bonds, because high interest rate also affects. It has a way of raising bonds. So that is also very, especially fixed instrument. So that's also a concern. And secondly, it's that you also look at oil prices. Oil prices certainly has also improved. What it takes, what it does for Nigeria is that it reduces your risk, your risk aversion, especially when you want to take in um, foreign, foreign debt instruments. Secondly, it's that it also, in, it also improves your fiscal capacity. You know, between now, between 2016, 20, between 2017, sorry, and 2014, our fiscal capacity has diminished largely. 
at 2014. Which is, which is really which having is, an adverse impact. Yes, because mm. 2014, our budget in dollar times is about $32 billion. Mm. This budget in 2018 is just 20, it's about just 23. So nothing to celebrate about the $8 trillion in the <laughs> budget. So, that's a, so, you, so an increase in oil certainly improves your, fisc, your fiscal capacity. Mm. What it also does is that increase oil prices has, it affects the balance sheets of banks, directly or indirectly, because mm. what we've seen is that Banks are actually on the actually enjoy the top spot on the preference scales in terms of credit. So when you have a fall in oil prices, it affects the quality of uh, quality of assets of banks. But when you have an increase in oil prices, what it does is that it improves the quality of assets of banks. So an increase in the oil price, what it does is that it also imp improves the quality of assets of banks. And don't forget that most of these banks are on the NSE. They are listed so, and part of them driving the market. So stock. it has a bandwagon effect mm, even yeah. on equities. So. It's good. It reduces your risk, foreign risk, increases your fiscal capacity, and thirdly, that it also reduces the possibilities of hike in, in rising NPLs because your NPLs also fall. But more importantly, is that we must also not continue this trend whereby we, we, we just don't save because we have to save. So we need to incentivize in, uh, savings plans. Yes, incentivize. With the capital market and financial market players. Yes, and, and, and also provides room for us to take the right reforms. Because like we had said all this while, is that what creates the precondition for growth is reforms. So now that you have our, you have our prices, you should take the right necessary reforms in terms of exchange rate, in terms of even fiscal, fiscal consolidation. You should this do that. It's very important. It's yeah. very, very important. So it, those, it gives you that. So you are, not, you are switching more from um, short term to mid, short term to mid, but rather to mid to long, which is mm. very, very important. So... As a, with that, it gives you, it gives um, pol, um, economic agents, especially foreign economic agents, are more driven to but come that, and that invest. Brings, that brings the ERGP to mind to see how sustainable and how incentivizing it is to investors. But, but finally, let's look at this whole report is really, really touching. And it's a time for reflection from all stakeholders, not just government, but all stakeholders in the economy. What is the key word to policymakers and all stakeholders in coming from this report? The key word is that we must learn. And we must learn from, well, there are certain takeaways, and those takeaways is that if you don't take the right reforms, the market punishes you for that. That's right. the normal sin of omission. <laughs> they either come by, you have one, you have high debt, which you are seeing, mm -hmm. and at the same time, you also have a flat, you have an ex, your, your, your currency plummets. Mm -hmm. 2016, 2015 is a good example good of that. Good lesson for us. Yeah. So that is it. So you have to take the right reforms. You have to reduce government size, improve public, uh, public to private partnership. These are key issues, very, very key issues if you want to move forward. At the same, and lastly is that you also have to ensure that you have to, you have to invest more on human capital. Investing on human capital itself is key because you cannot achieve whatever level of, the, the, level, of um, the level of growth. The nature of the, the quality of growth is also largely dependent on your human capital. That is resonating everywhere in the country. So and resonating, and therefore, it also those are the main things that are very, very, very important. And you need a synchronization between monetary and fiscal policy. We've not had that proper synchronization. Even with attempts from the minister and the civilian governor in terms of looking at notes and seeing how much we can align, it's still an issue. There's, well, there's in term, the question is you. you it goes beyond looking at the <laughs> No, it's not looking at uh, <laughs> It's about what's the strategic position. Are we pushing growth? Are we going, are we going for, for growth? growth? Yeah. Are, you for, are, you to, are you going for growth? Apart from growth, is that what's the strategic position for like three or five years? Yeah. You've had countries like Chile who have had Montreal fiscal policy, which has strategy. Yeah. You might not have, you might not accept, you might not agree on all terms, but there are certain key factors which are the levels that will drive growth. That the monetary policy in support of. The question we should ask ourselves is that, is that there? Thank you so much, Topwe, for the time. It's really very clear that a lot has to be done in reforms, sustainable reforms to Thank drive you. the economy forward. And we must not miss the targets because a lot of things <laughs> punish us. Thank you. Thank you for the time, Topwe.